This is a good class for the kids, especially since they're back to school. So let me start it off with Ina Alhamdulillah, Wasalat, Wasalam Allah, Wa Rasulullah. Today we're going to be speaking about the importance, the importance of not compromising your faith, the importance of not compromising your belief system. You guys are back in school now. Just because all the other kids are doing it doesn't mean that you should do it. Just because none of the other girls are wearing hijab, all the other girls are coming to school looking like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, doesn't mean that you need to look like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Okay? You got to be that Muslim girl that stands out that Muslim boy who stands out just because all the other boys are smoking cigarettes, smoking weed and vaping. That's the big problem. I understand a lot of our youth are vaping. This is bad. Vaping leads to smoking weed. Oh yeah. They put that, them, that fat and stuff in there and you vaping yourself into oblivion. You're going to be waking up in the hellfire with a bunch of demons poking at you. So just because everyone else is doing it don't mean that you can do it. Never compromise your faith. That's what we're going to be speaking about. Oh, wrong mouth. That's what we're going to be speaking about uh, in chapter 10 of this book today. And let's look at this. We, you know, um, uh, we have this beautiful hadith given to us by Ali. May Allah be pleased with him. And who was Ali? He was the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was also his son-in-law. He was the fourth leader over the Muslims. He will be the fourth person to enter paradise after the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And nobody on this planet knows the religion better than him except the Prophet and those three that came after him, okay, before him. So listen to this wonderful hadith. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, tells us that the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said nothing, nothing is more honorable than a Muslim who, who is a believer and is strong and powerful. And nothing is more dishonorable to Allah than a Muslim who is weak and powerless. Subhana Allah. How do we define the weak, the strong Muslim? The strong Muslim is the one that can maintain his identity, who can maintain good character, who can stand up in the face of evil and say no and walk away. No, I don't do drugs. No, I don't drink. No, I don't have girlfriends. No, I don't have boyfriends. Call me LGBTQPST. I don't care. I'm walking away. So that's a powerful, strong believer. And if you can say no, despite what everybody else is doing, this is how you earn the love of Allah. And we have to remember as Muslims that we are all obligated to live each day of our life obeying Allah and following of the teachings of the Quran and the Sunnah. Remember, whatever is in the heart is going to manifest itself through your actions and behavior. We have to keep that in mind, kids. You will hear some people say, some adults say, oh, you can't judge me. You don't know what's in my heart. Oh, yes, I'm supposed to judge you. 
I'm supposed to judge your behavior. I don't know what's in your heart. But as the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whatever is in the heart will manifest through your actions and your behavior. So saying that you believe in Allah, that means you're going to live by a certain a standard of life. Your actions, your speech, your behavior, the choices you make in life will determine if you truly believe in Allah or not. So we have to remember, kids, that obedience to Allah comes before obedience to anyone and anything else. Never succumb. Never succumb to peer pressure. A lot of you, from what I understand, I did not know that these Muslim schools have raised their prices so high. You know, a lot of the, you know, first of all, I encourage everyone to homeschool their children because there's no safety even in the mosque anymore. And we all don't need to talk about that, but we know what's going on in a lot of these Islamic communities. And I want you children to understand something. Let me emphasize this. How do I do that? Hold on. Oh, oh wrong button. Let me emphasize something with you kids. Hold on. I want to make myself closer up so y'all can really see this. Because this is something. Cheering. <laughs> can they see me? <laughs> Cheering. I want to emphasize something to you guys. This is very important. And I want all the kids to pay attention. And uh, the parents, some of the parents, uh, these uh, 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 pacifying parents and, you know, the okie doke parents may not agree with what I'm getting ready to say and do. But, you know, I don't care because what is today's all, uh, uh, lecture all about? Don't compromise your belief. Don't compromise your belief for anyone. OK, so I'm getting ready to tell you, kids, something I want you all to pay attention. No one. And I repeat. No one is supposed to touch you. In an inappropriate way. Never be afraid. To tell your parents that someone touched you in an inappropriate way. If someone touches you, you try to, you push them off, scream, yell, do whatever. You say, no, scream, fight, push them off and run away from them. And then you go, if it's happening in school, you run to the principal's office. You say, he touched me or she touched me. Even if it's a teacher. Even if a teacher asks you to stay over and then they touch you in an uncomfortable way, you yell, no, and push it off and run. You say, Allah Akbar and run. Run to the principal's office. And you tell him, he touched me in an inappropriate way. Don't ever be afraid, kids. And then you tell your parents too, okay? Don't sit there and be uncomfortable. Some teacher is touching you and you don't feel right. Say, Allahu Akbar, no, and push him away and run. Usually when you say Allahu Akbar, what happens? When you say Allahu Akbar, the angels of mercy that are around you. Remember, every one of us have angels assigned to the front. And you have angels assigned to the back. When you say Allahu Akbar, scream it out loud. Those angels will spread their wings like this and they will protect you. And then you run out of that room. You run to the principal. You run down the hall screaming, Allahu Akbar, as you run. And those angels got you. And you tell the principal, he or she touched me in an inappropriate way. Do you kids understand? And I'm talking about Muslim schools. Even if you're in a Muslim school too, 
Just because he says he's a shake, just because she's shaker, just because he's usted, just because she's usteda, that does not give them the right to touch you. Do you kids understand? This is what your parents should be telling you. But unfortunately, they're not talking to the kids about this. Well, Layla Nasheba will talk about it. Okay? So if Shaka or the Sheikh or the Imam ask you to come uh, just to stay after class for a minute because he wants to talk to you about a law, so you say, okay, Sheikh, Imam, scholar, and then he comes to you and says, you know, you look so cute. Can I kiss you and then kiss you? You say, Allah, Akbar, no! And you run out of that room. And you run down the hall screaming, Allah, Akbar! And you tell that principal, that shake so-and-so touched me. You understand, kids? That's the reality. No one has a right to put their hands on you in an inappropriate manner. Anyone who does that has violated the laws of Allah. Anyone who does that is a denizen of shaitan. Anyone who does that does that is going to burn, baby, burn. And it ain't about no disco fever. It's about, you know, Allah taking vengeance on them. Do you kids understand? So don't be fooled by the beard. Don't be fooled because she's got a niqab on. No one can touch you to kiss you, to hold your hand, or anything else. And you parents need to tell your children this, because this is a problem in the Muslim schools here in America. You better homeschool your children. I keep telling y'all, homeschooling is the best way to go. But from what I understand, even the homeschool programs are expensive. A lot of us can't afford to pay five and $600 a month. And you got five children. So some of us have no choice, you know, but to send them out to the Kaffir school. Okay. Or I still say do the K through 12 program. Homeschool them through K through 12, which is free. Okay. Be careful of that, kids. Just because people say that they Muslim don't mean that they good. We got good Muslims in the world and we got bad Muslims in the world. Y'all understand that? That's why it's gonna be more people in hell than paradise. Don't let nobody put their hands on you. Allah, Akbar, no! That's what you do. And you run out of there. Everybody got it? All right, don't get it twisted. Okay, sorry. I got to make that point because I'm, I'm hearing just, it's just ridiculous how these children are subjected to so much fitna, even in the Muslim schools now. All right, so, you know, our Quran and our Hadith, you know, they give us guidance on how to be devout to our faith. But even though Allah tells us what to stay away from, doesn't mean that people are not going to do it. Even though the Hadith tell us what not to do, doesn't mean the people won't do it. But listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Whoever obeys him and whoever obeys the prophet, this is a person who has attained success. So the simple fact that you are living your life obeying Allah first, obeying the prophet second, and obeying your parents, Allah will be your protector. Allah will, will help you and to get through the ups and downs of life. So this verse here emphasizes again the importance of obeying Allah and his prophet. And even the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever obeys Allah and him, this is the person that will attain success. So school is started. Some of you are going to Kaffir school. Some of you got Muslim school. 
Understand that even no matter what school you're in, you have to make sure that you carry yourself, you know, the way Allah commanded us to carry ourselves. And don't let people violate you either. Respect is earned, not given. The simple fact that you stand up for your Islamic values, the simple fact that you don't compromise your faith because a person is a sheikh, a person is an imam, the fact that you don't fear no one but Allah, that will cause the people to respect you and to fear you. That's the power. What did Ali say? A person who is strong and powerful. When you demand respect, when you make the people respect you, that's the power. All right? So, the pressure of compromising our faith, compromising our values come from many different sources. The kids you go to school with, even at the mosque, some of the Muslim kids will try to get you to compromise your faith because they're weak. It can come from the media, social media, the bullying on there. It can come from watching television. Look at all these TV shows. Everybody's advocating LGBTQ now. Okay, so we are put in situations where Allah is going to test us to see if we really do believe in him. But we have to pass the test. And how do we pass the test? By remaining firm. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. Do not follow the desires of those who have gone astray and do not swerve away from the truth that has come to you. You kids have been coming here all summer learning this religion. You kids have been coming here every day learning what the correct belief system is. You've even been learning what the Mechosidic tafsir or the Mechosidic understanding of the Quran. So now you're going to go to school around weaker Muslims or around non-believing kids. Don't allow them weak Muslims or those non-believers to pull you away from what you know to be true about this religion. Don't let them cause you to become disrespectful to your parents, disrespectful to the elders. I had to kick a kid, a woman. A woman came into my uh, Facebook group, our group page that we all have where I post the classes and the videos. This woman was 30 years old. This is a 30 year old woman, but she's a kid to me. I am 63 years old. I got grandkids, you know, but she came into my Facebook page and called me a clown. Oh yeah, she clicked on one of my shorts, the short that I did about how Muslim women are supposed to be women of uh, that don't indulge in zina. I guess she didn't like it. I don't know. Maybe she indulges in zina. I don't know. But she put typed on my video, what a clown. So y'all see what I did. I didn't play. I kicked her out. And I told her, let me tell you something, little girl. And she was, and guess what? She's from Africa. She ain't no, no convert. She comes from a Muslim country. She's Somali. She's from Kenya too. She's Somalian from Kenya. 30 years old. So I kicked her out. But before I banned her, I let her know. I said, you, I don't have time to play with young little girls who don't have no manners, who don't know how to respect their elders. I had to tell her, I am a 63-year-old grandmother. How dare you? disrespect me and i'm a dyer too how double dare you disrespect me and i told her go back to your country and learn some manners go back to your country and learn how to respect your elders so like i said just because a person's muslim don't mean that you can trust them fully either just like respect is earned so is trust. Y'all understand that? Do not follow the desires of those who have gone astray. And do not swerve yourself away from the truth that you know to be the truth. 
Okay. So stay away from people who are bad. Stay away from people that are going to lead you down that bad path to hell and try to surround yourself with strong, powerful other people like yourself. Remember the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of people are those who are helpful and beneficial to others. The worst of people are those who harm others. Subhana Allah, you want the reputation of being a bad person. Because every time you come around, people are like, uh-oh, here he comes. Uh-oh, here she comes. What bad things she has to say today? Who they going to hurt with their tongue today? Who they going to hurt with their hand today? You don't want to be that type of person that the people fear you coming around them. You want to be the person who, when you enter a room, they say, oh, mashallah, there's Najma. Oh, mashallah, Brother Shuaib is here. Oh, mashallah, there's Tahira. And the people come around you. You want to be that type of person because the people are glad to see you because they know that whenever you come around, good things happen. Oh, mashallah, good things happen. Now it's going to be nice because Shuaib's here. So this hadith reminds us that our actions should be based on the teachings of Islam, not what the people are doing. If everybody in the class is smoking cigarettes, so what? I'm going to be that red, that black bird with the red beak that says, no, not me. And I'm going to walk away and leave the room. If all the kids got boyfriends, if all the kids got girlfriends, so what? Not me. I'm going to live my life in conformance to what Allah says, because I know what my purpose is. I know that I was put here on this earth to be tested in my belief in Allah. Remember, Allah tells us in the interpretation, the meaning, I did not create the jinn, nor did I create mankind for any reason other than to worship me. That's my purpose. That's your purpose. We were all created to worship Allah. And every day of our lives, you guys are going to be tested every day when you go to school to see if you truly believe in Allah. Just like I'm tested every day on this website. You know, I'm tested every day to see if I truly do believe la ilaha illallah. Am I just one of those daya, one of those ustadas, one of those speakers that talk about Islam, but don't act upon it? That's our test. Okay. So, and again, Allah out of his mercy, he doesn't just tell us the laws. He doesn't just give us the rules. But he gives us examples as to how to honor those laws, how to live up to those rules. We have the, had the hadith of the companions, the companions of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They lived in a world without compromising their belief system. They faced more challenges than any of us. They faced even more challenges than the people of Gaza. But they still remain steadfast in their faith. The companions to this day are known for their honesty, their integrity, their compassion. And everybody, even the people who hated them, respected them. Like I used to tell the kids when I was in school, oh, yeah. I used to tell all the girls in school when I'd come in and they, they used to call me the flying nun because I've always wore, I dressed like Sabrina. I wore a bias and Kimars every day. I remember one day I was in the sixth grade. When I was in the sixth grade, I came in with a longer bio on and a, and, a, and a longer key mark, and they called me the flying nun. And then I heard one girl say, I don't like her. I can't stand her. I don't even like Sally Field. I remember I turned around. I said, I could care less whether you like me or not. I said, long as you respect me, that's all. And I've been saying that all my life when I used to work before I retired, I used to tell my coworkers, I don't care if y'all like me, just long as when I walk into this room, y'all respect me, that's all I care about. 
You can talk about me behind my back. You can make fun. You can laugh. But when I enter this room, y'all better shut up. And that's what would happen. When my co-work, when I entered the room, everybody would shut up. Oh, hi, Miss Layla. Oh, you look so lovely today. When I know they were just saying, oh, here she come, looking like a terrorist. Why don't she go back home? Oh, I used to hear that all the time and still do. Why don't she go home? I am home. But as long as when I enter that room, you shut up and respect me, I could care less. And that's the attitude that we all should have. That's the attitude the companions had. They were respected even by their enemies. So as Muslims, we need to look at their examples and try to be like them. They are our role models. Who's my role model? My role model is Aisha, ready Allahu anha, always has been. I try to be a carbon copy of her. I try to model myself after her. I try to be notorious like she was. Aisha is notorious. She's not famous. She's one of the most hated companions still to this day because of her intelligence, her beauty, her faith. And how she never let anyone break her. I try to emulate her and be just as notorious as she was. So make the companions your role models. Never, ever, you know, compromise your faith. Be kind to the non-believers. Be nice to the weak Muslims. Be honest in how you treat people. Be just and fair, but never, ever compromise your faith. I hope you kids understand this. This is some good stuff. This is a valuable lesson since you guys are back in school now. So now let's see how well you understood this. I'm going to give you guys a quiz. Take a look-see. First question, take a look-see. Why did Allah create us? Who can answer that? By the way, thank you for the Starbucks. One of my students uh, paid for this Starbucks for me. The one that lives here in Cleveland where I live. Thank you. May Allah bless you. Make sure we go out. We got to check out that place today, tomorrow too. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, look who's here. We have um, 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 Sully, Brother Sully. Why did Allah create us? Go ahead. Well, I like your son. Allah created us for us to change the world and and make it more beautiful and more more intelligent and better. Mashallah, y'all hear his answer? He said Allah created us to make the world a better place for you and me. Mashallah. Good job. Anyone else, too? Any other reason why he created? And he did. He created us to make the world a better place, to be an example to others. Go ahead, uh, Sister Tahira. Let's hear your answer. Why did Allah create you? Why did he create us? Good job, Sully. He created us to worship him. Mashallah. Good job, exactly. Not only did Allah create us to make the world a better place, but also Allah created us first and foremost to worship him. That's the first thing. The first reason is to worship him. And long as we're worshiping him, how do we show that we're worshiping him? By how we treat others. If you're worshiping Allah the way that you should be, then the world would be a better place. And that's why the world is not a good place. I'm so glad Brother Sully brought that up. That's one of the reasons why the world is not a good place. Because the people have no, ver no values. We're so mean to each other. We're not kind. And we don't believe in Allah. If we believed in Allah, we'd be kind and good in our dealings with others. Good job. Let's look at the next question. What about this? One of the kids in school has a cheat sheet of a quiz that the teacher is going to give you guys. So the other kids come to you and say, hey, I got a copy of the cheat sheet. 
Do you want me to give a copy of it to you so you can get an A on the quiz? You can study and memorize the answers. What would you say? What would you do, Shuei? Let's hear from Shuei. I'd, uh, I'd say no, and then I'll tell the teacher. Mashallah, you'd say no. He was said he would say no and tell the teacher. Why would you say no? Um, uh, because uh, if, if he keeps cheating on other tests, he's not going to learn anything. That's a good answer. First of all, what are you going to learn from cheating? You're not going to learn nothing. Cheating is just memorizing. You know, the prophet said understanding is when you take what you memorize, apply it to your heart and act on it. Good job. Uh, Sister um, um, Asma Najma, what would you do if the kids offered people, you? People don't like cheaters as well. Good job. So what would you do if they came to you and said, we're going to give you this quiz to study from? I would say no because that. I would say no because that's wrong and you shouldn't do that. Exactly. No, I don't need your cheat sheet. I can learn this on my own. Good job. What's the point of going to school when you're all when all you're going to do is cheat? Exactly. You see how intelligent. This is what happens when we live by the laws of Islam. This is what happens when we put into action uh, the values that Allah commanded us to implement. Exactly. What's the point? You know, if I'm going to cheat my way through life, I'm not going to learn nothing. I'm not going to make it in life. Good job. What about this? Sister Sanaya. Sanaya, name something that the other kids do that you should not do. Sanaya, what's something that the other kids do that you wouldn't, you know that we shouldn't do? Go ahead, Sanaya. Passwords and don't wear their hijab and, and, don't, and don't listen to their teacher. Wow, mashallah. Because their teacher is trying to teach them to be smart. Good job. You know, yeah, that's because they don't wear hijab. Don't mean that you don't. You still wear yours. In fact, you make it pretty. You make sure that you match it. You make sure you got on an abaya with a beautiful matching uh, 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 kimar, okay? And yes, you can wear earrings. One of the little girls asked me here, can she wear earrings? Yes, just make sure your ears are covered. Wear the kind that hang. You're too young for that. Wait till you get older, then you can wear the kind of hanging earrings. You don't need, you know, Sister Layla don't wear earrings. You know, you know what happened. You know, I worked with the gin. One of the gins, and y'all know that? Why come I don't wear earrings, she said. Let me tell y'all what happened. Let me, you know, I was at work one day. One of my clients was possessed by their gin. I walked in, and I started reciting the Quran to uh, her. She jumped up out of the bed, and well, she was double-jointed, and she grabbed me by my uh, ear and ripped. I had an earring on, a long earring. I had a hoop on. She ripped my earring out and split my ear down in half. I had to go to emergency and get my ear sold back. Oh, yeah, my ear was split open, split in half. So they took me to the emergency and they sold it back closed. And I haven't wore earrings since then because it scared me. You know, I put up a tough exterior, but y'all know Layla's a crybaby. I'm, I'm like a little girl. I cry easily. So I cried and got scared. And I said, I ain't never wearing no earrings no more. And I stopped wearing earrings. That's when I started wearing my nose ring. I said, I'm going to get my nose pierced. I'm going to wear a nose ring. Okay. But that's why I don't wear earrings because I don't want nobody to rip. I said, hey, that could be a man. What if I was coming home and some man tried to touch me inappropriately? He would grab me by my earring. So I said, I'm not going to give a man a reason to grab me by my earring. So I don't wear earrings no more. You got to be able to throw down, take a person down to the ground. Hello. Mace them and tase them. Keep it moving. Okay. <laughs> Mashallah. So exactly. You know, you don't, you know, they, they're not wearing hijab. That don't mean that you don't wear one. Good answer, Sanaya. What about you, Amira? Um, I would say no because I don't want to 
Amira, what's something else that the other kids do that you shouldn't do? Amira? Okay, we can't hear you. Speak, speak up, baby. They, dis they, dis they disrespect their parents and their elders. That's the big problem. Like that Somali girl I had to kick out of our Sooner Followers Facebook group. 30-year-old woman who thought she could disrespect Layla because she thought that I was her age. I keep telling y'all looks are deceiving. We got to respect our elders. And that's the problem. You listen to these kids nowadays, they talk to their parents so badly. They curse at their parents, no respect. No respect for the elderly. So you do not want to imitate them with that. Good job. Okay, Sabrina, what's something else the other kids do that we shouldn't do, Sabrina? Um, a lot of it, I've seen it. They disrespect their teachers in my class. They have girlfriends and boyfriends, and they love to cuss. Oh, God, yes. Oh, she named it all. Oh, my God. They have no respect for the teachers. They got girlfriend, boyfriends. They curse. It's all about what did what did the Justin Bieber do? It's all about Jay-Z. You know, it's all about cursing and talking now like the hip hop singers. It's all about being Cardi B. Look how filthy and vulgar Cardi B's mouth is. Even Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is a beautiful woman to look at. She got the most prettiest face. She looks so beautiful in the face, but when Nicki Minaj opens her mouth, it's disgusting because she's, she, she's vulgar. And the way she dresses, oh my God, Nicki, you got to cover that butt up. That ain't attractive. That's nasty. It looks like disease. So we have to be careful, guys. We, you know, they, these non-Muslim kids, they have no respect for their teachers. It's all about having a boyfriend. The girls think it's about being naked. The boys think it's about acting like a rap star. You know, subhanAllah. Allah. Asthma and asthma. What's some other things the kids do that you shouldn't do? Um, girls dating girls and boys dating boys. Oh, my God. Yes, we got them in school. I know y'all like JoJo Siwa. Did you guys know that all the dance mom girls are LGBTQ? Not only is JoJo LGBTQ, did y'all know Maddie too? Maddie is by, look at, Maddie just made a movie. And she's got a girl, she was a girl in the movie and a boy. You know, the, the, the dance mom girls, look at uh, what's the one with the blonde hair that everybody felt sorry for. She's LGBTQ like JoJo. Oh my God. Everybody's LGBTQ and bisexual. What they call it? Bisexual, no gender preference. And they talk about it. And that's why the parents need to wake up. Your children know these terms. Your children know what bisexual means. They know what no gender preference means. Just because the, they want you to think it's okay, to be gay doesn't mean that you follow them in that. Good job. Go ahead, Brother Sully. What's something else the kids do that you shouldn't do, Brother Sully? Um, one of the kids touched me in my pilot part, and he's actually a big bully. He actually does it to other kids, and he likes to sneak behind me and, and start pulling me on the ground on my pilot parts. And so the last time I warned him on recess that we were on the bridge and I told him, hey, don't touch my prep car. I was letting him know. And so he got behind me and did it. And so I slapped that boy and I kicked him off the bridge. Now he has a big bleeding on his hand. Good job. You see that, kids? And I thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. Because like I tell you, parents, this is real. You parents need to talk to your kids because this is happening. This is happening in school. Did you tell your mom and dad, Sully? Yes. Did your mom take care of it? No. Well, I, I mean, I didn't ask my mom. I asked the principal, but they called his dad and mom, 
But they but they don't care. They said to me one time. They said that they don't care. It's just it's annoying to see you. Did you tell your mom and dad this happened? Yes, but I. I Geechee, did you take care of this? Geechee, did your mom and dad take care of it? Did you take care of that? Yes, I did. Girl, what happened? He's just now he's just now retelling me the story. Oh yeah, I got with the teachers, but they don't want us the parents to come to the school. But trust me, when I pick them up, I either <laughs> the parents or and the student, and they're kind of ghetto. Ghetto. So I had to and I had to really get in with the the counselors and the teachers, but we addressed it because I was like, what is being done about this? So they did. Tell, so you did your your your, your, your I know your husband got really upset, probably. Yeah, we don't we don't play that. So that's it's what that, you've been dealing with, uh huh. That's why you ain't been on that mic. It's, you know, I just got to take care of business. Yeah, I see. I see. Well, I'm good. That, and see, just like he told his parents, mm -hmm. and I want y'all to parents, and I'm glad that he shared this because, we, you know, we got Muslim parents, you know, that don't talk to their kids about this. You know, the boys are being molested, even in the Muslim schools. So if they're doing it in the Muslim schools, you can know, know this. He, go, he goes to Muslim school, and he goes to non-Muslim school, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Then if they happen in the non-Muslim schools, you know, the Muslim schools, you know what's happening non-Muslim. But I'm so proud of you, Sully. And by the way, are y'all putting him in Taekwondo? What's that? That's martial arts. Oh, yeah, martial arts. That's why I tell you parents, every Muslim kid should be in Taekwondo. Every Muslim kid know, should know how to defend themselves because this is what our children are up against. Every day, I know, I know karate. Good, that's what I'm, I'm saying. You take I'm real it. Good, I'm real good at karate. I could actually kick somebody and uh, off their head and they'll fall off something. I'm actually really good. That's probably what happened to that boy. You 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 kicked him and dealt with him, and that was it. That's what I'm saying. Y'all see that? Put your kids in martial arts so they can defend themselves like he did. And you do defend yourself, and then you do just like he did. You say a low one bar, you go tell the principal, and you go home and tell your parents so it can be addressed. The world ain't no safe place for a cheering today. Always live here and real at Sooner Followers. Oh, yeah. Good job. So, mashallah, let's see. I think that was the last quiz. Yes, it was. That was the last question. Mashallah, get kids. That's why I said I know we had technical problems getting this class going, but I wasn't going to cancel this class. I wanted to get this message out because as a dyer, I get phone calls every day from Muslim parents all over America and some in Canada telling me about what their kids are subjected to, not just in the non-Muslim schools, but the Muslim schools too. And a lot of the parents are telling me that even homeschooling, uh, unless they do the, I try to tell them to do the Muslim homeschooling, Muslim homeschooling is expensive, especially when you got more than one child. But we're gonna have to do K through 12 or something, because the world is a bad place. You can't trust. That's one of the signs of the last hour. Remember, we talked about that hadith. The prophet said trust will disappear. You won't be able to find anyone that you can trust with your children, with your property, with your life. You're going to have to travel to a whole different city, a different country to find somebody that you can trust your property to. And what's the most important property we have? Our children. You can't trust your children to go to the mosque, to a school without being hurt. This is, these are the signs of the last hour. All right, so mashallah. Now what we're gonna do for this class is move on to the hadith for the week. And we're studying from the book entitled Islamic Hadith, uh, 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 Hadith on Islamic Behavior and Discipline. This book is written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Adli. Go to www.adlionline.com. Get a copy of this book. It's only like $4 or something. And we're going to go over hadith number 44 for today. 
And this hadith is narrated by Abu Dar. He said, and in fact, let me fix this so I can see y'all. I'm an old lady. I keep telling y'all Layla's an old lady. She can't see. I got contacts on. I have to take my contacts off to see, and I'm not taking them off. Okay. Abu Dar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that there are three people who Allah will, there are, there are three groups of people. When we say three people, that means three groups or categories of people. There are three categories of people whom Allah will not look at or speak to on the day of judgment, nor will he absolve them. What does that mean? If Allah is not going to look at you or speak to you, that means you're going straight to hell. And that means you're not going to be forgiven of your sins. In other words, absolve means Allah is not going to forgive you. He's so angry with you. Remember, we're supposed to live each day of our life trying to please Allah, not compromising our religion for anyone. It's all about Allah. Well, if you didn't do that, Allah is not going to look at you, nor is he going to speak to you. He's going to tell the angels, drag him by his face and throw him in hell. And you're going to burn, baby, burn forever with John Travolta and Olivia. Oh, yeah. You'll be doing disco fever in that hellfire. By the way, I need to do some disco. I'm going to work my knees. Okay. Well, who are the three groups of people? Abu Dar said, I asked the prophet, who are these three groups of people that Allah will just throw in the hellfire and never forgive? The prophet said they are the man who used to walk around dragging his clothes on the ground out of arrogance. He used to wear his pants hanging on the ground, wear his pants underneath his behind. Y'all see that? You know, the rap stars wearing their pants underneath their butts. The pants dragging the ground. Why do they do that? Out of arrogance. Arrogance is a, is a characteristic of shaitan. Anyone who does that, Allah is not going to look at you. He's not going to speak to you. He's not going to forgive you of your sins. He's going to say, throw him into hell forever. Because arrogance is a sin of disbelief. And also the second group are those people that used to do good things for you. But then they would throw it up in your face. For example, your brother, he's mad at you because you won't clean up his room for him. So he'll say, remember that time you needed $5 because you wanted to buy some candy and I gave you $5? Nobody likes to be reminded of the favors that somebody did for them. That's another sin of disbelief. If you're one of those people who can't have your way, or if you're angry at someone, you remind them of the good things you used to do for them, That's and you die from a person who hasn't repented from that, that's a sin of disbelief. Allah is never going to forgive you. He's going to throw you in hell, and you'll be there forever. And the third category are people who used to sell things, but, uh, but they would swear, they would swear that what they were selling was the best in the world when it wasn't. For example, I got this coffee. I say, hey, buy this coffee from me. This is, I swear by Allah that this is the best coffee on earth. I swear by Allah, you can't get no better coffee. Allah hates that. You're lying. You're lying just to make money. We got a lot of teachers that do that on the internet. They lie about Islam just to get you to join and, 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 and they make money off of you. So these three groups of people, Allah hate the sins they've done so bad that he'll never forgive them. A person that's arrogant, a person that throws up the good things they did for you when they get mad at you. And a person that lies just to make money, a stock for law. So we learn from that hadith that we should follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He didn't behave that way, so neither should we. And again, for you brothers, you boys, it's haram for you boys 
to wear your garments dragging the ground. It's haram for you boys to walk around with your pants underneath your behind, being arrogant. And we learn that we never remind people of the good things we did for them and never swear to something that we know is not true. And always be honest whenever we do business. So mashallah, that's our class for today. And I know we got off to a rough start. I don't know, I was having problems with my computer. I think it was the computer, uh, the laptop. I noticed it was updating because now my laptop screen over there says updated. So that's why I couldn't get the stuff to work. But alhamdulillah, a log made it work because this was a class I didn't want to miss. I know I was late with it, but I didn't want you kids to think that I put you on the back burner. I don't put people on the back burner. I don't like that. Because I don't like nobody to put me on the back burner. So you all see, I fought and made it through. I struggled, but I made it through. I showed up, I figured it out, and we had the class. So alhamdulillah, uh, may Allah bless all you kids. And I want you kids to remember, just like Sully said, if anybody ever touches you in an inappropriate way, because you guys are in school now, and I'm telling you, these schools, the non-Muslim schools are advocating LGBTQ. The Muslim schools are undercover with it. So I want all you children listening to me that didn't understand no one should touch you in an inappropriate way. And if they do, you scream, you yell, you fight them off and say Allah Akbar and run like Sully did and report it immediately to the people of authority and tell your parents. They're trying to force this lifestyle on us. We have to be resilient. We have to be strong, like the prophet said, because those of us who are strong, we're the one that holds the power. I'm going to make you respect me. That's power. If you can make the people respect you, if you can enter a room and everybody know, don't mess with you, that's power. Okay? All right. So we're going to stop right here. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika. A shadow on la ila haila anta. Stuck the ruka wa tubile. I want everybody to remember we got my six o'clock class at six. I'm going to be doing diluting wella wabara, wella wabara. I put that um, the, the pages out already for you. And then at seven, we have my cousin Mukhtar. Mukhtar will be doing the life of Khalid bin Wali. And then at 9 p.m. East 9.30 p.m., we have my class on marriage. So I want to thank everybody for joining and participating. I'm so proud of you kids. Uh, Asma and Najma, you guys are in Muslim school or, or what? Or, or are you all homeschool? Going to a Catholic school. Okay. Well, they don't have to mess with y'all, though, right? I know that my girls want to take kick butt. Yeah. Y'all y'all know don't, don't nobody put their hands on you, right? Yeah. But I know they, they those, my girls are from Somalia. They don't play. They are jacked them up. Yeah, you even gave health lessons about like abuse and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know you and y'all throw down. I know what y'all know what to do. Cause Shams ain't having that. Give my salams to your mom, and uh, inshallah, I'll see you guys next week. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Wa alaikum salam. Oh, let me see. That's your house. Hey, anyway, turn your camera on, Sully. Sully, turn your camera on. Is that your mom's house? No, it's just background. Oh, that's about going to say, wow, let me see that fireplace. Okay. All right. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Have a good day. See y'all at six, inshallah. Okay. Okay.